Hey, in this lesson, we will learn the relationship between radical expressions, all right, those that have these radical symbols in them, and exponential expressions, where instead we have a base and a power, where um, many of the exponents will be fractions. That's the rational part, means including fractions. Okay, so if you see a base with a fractional power, that power is going to be in the form power over root. All right, so that's what I'm doing here with these letters. Yeah, so power over root. So keep that in mind, for example, if you have something like 5 to the 2 thirds power, if I wanted to rewrite this in radical form, then I just need to understand that um, 2 is the power and 3 is the root. Okay, so if you keep that in mind, then um, if I start with the 5, um, 3 is the root, so that means we're dealing with a cube root. All right, so there's cube root of 5. Now, 2 is the power, um, which I can put on the outside like this. All right, I could put it on the inside as well, uh, but this is going to be usually more helpful. All right, so the power goes out there, and then, of course, the root. So let's keep that in mind as we do the problems. Um, yeah, of course, we can go the other way as well. If I give you some sort of a radical, okay, so for example, let's say if I give you, um, say if I give you the fifth root of, n to the fourth power. Okay, well if I want to rewrite this, um, obviously four is the power and five is the root. So like we saw up here, in fractional form, it goes power over root. So I need to make my fraction power over root. So four fifths. Now understand that um, if I am not showing a number at all, like so, say if I have just the square root of n, um, there's an invisible number right here. It's not a 1, it's a 2. So, um, and there's also the invisible power. The invisible power is 1. So if I wanted to rewrite this in fractional form, square root is the same thing as n to the 1 half power. Okay, similarly, cube root would be the same thing as n to the one-third power. Okay. And let's say fourth root would be the same thing as n to the one-fourth power, etc., etc., etc. Just do one more for fun. Fifth root you guessed it, would be n to the one-fifth power, okay? Because all of these have an invisible power of one. So power over root, one over five, one over four, one over three, and one over two. So when we look at problems like number one, if I want to rewrite this in exponent form, I've got to do power over root. So this is one over three. Okay, the cube root is simply the one-third power. Um, yeah. So, looking at problem number two, power over root. So this would be the same thing as six to the two-thirds power. Okay. Similarly, number three, um, four is the power and five is the root. So we need power over root. So that is four fifths. So that's the answer number three. Um, let's deal with this negative sign before we get too carried away. Um, let's see, what is it? Seventh root of negative 21. 
Okay, um, if I have the seventh root of negative 21, is that really the seventh root? Yep. Um, if you have an odd root, that negative is not going anywhere. So this is going to be the same thing as negative seventh root of 21. So basically, you can just bring the negative sign outside when it's odd. If it were even, by the way, okay, if this had been the eighth root of negative 21, I would have stopped right there and said not possible. Okay, you can't take the even root of a negative number. But odd root, no problem, just bring the negative out front. Okay, but we also have um, the third power going on. So let's just emotionally cope with that. You know, we've got a lot going on, but we can handle it. Um, same thing, we have an odd power. If you have an odd root or an odd power, that negative is not going anywhere. So once again, I could just bring that negative out front and then just deal with my seventh root of 21 to the third power. If this had been an even power, the negative would go away, poof. So basically, we had odd root, odd power, the negative just comes outside of it all. Now let's deal with this, uh, knowing that the negative is not going anywhere. Uh, power over root, so this will be 21 to the 3 sevenths power. Negative survives. Okay, bravo. Um, now looking at this one, not much going on. It's just power over root. 7 over 8. Wait a minute, I skipped these two problems. Silly me. I'm going to have to go back in my time machine and do number three. But by the time you watch me do number six and make this comment, I already will have edited it. So you already saw me do number three. Did you notice that it was spliced in there? It's good to have a time machine. All right. Anyway, number six. We've got a similar situation. Um, let me do this on the other screen. So I've got the ninth root of negative two to the fourth power. Okay, ninth root of negative two to the fourth power. Will the negative make it out of this thing alive? Um, well, odd root, the negative survives. So I will have negative and then I will have the ninth root of two. The negative makes it out of an odd root. If this were an even root, I immediately would have said not possible. But then I have the fourth power. What's gonna happen when you do a negative to an even power? Poof, that negative's gonna go away. So really, I'm just dealing with the ninth root of two to the fourth power. That negative is going to be gone because of the four. Okay, which means I'm going to have 2 to the power over root, 4 over 9. All right, soak it in. Now, number 7. We're just going the other way. Um, one third power is the same thing as cube root. Okay, so 17 to the one third power is the same thing as cube root of 17. All right, I mean, we can still think of it as power over root if we want to. You know what I mean? If I have 17 to the one-third power, I can think of, of this as the power, and I could think of this as the root. So I could go, well, there's my cube root, okay? And then the power is 1, but then we don't really need the 1, so it's just cube root of 17. But it's easier just to go ahead and uh, put in the front of your brain that one-third power is the same thing as cube root. Okay, every time I say root, I'm thinking, I am Groot. You seen that movie, Guardian of the Galaxies? I like that movie. Um, anyway, 44 to the one 
sixth power. So um, that's just going to be the sixth root of 44. Okay, number 9, 33 to the th 2 thirds power. 2 is the power, 3 is the root. So that makes this the cube root of 33. Okay, and 2 is the power. So square that. Alright, number 10. Power over root. 5 is the power, 3 is the root. So that means we've got the cube root of 9. And 5 is the power. Okay. Now, um, before we go any further, I've got an odd power and an odd root. So this negative sign is going to make it out of both. Um, so I'm going to wind up with a negative out front now. Um, so now let's do uh, the 5 is the root, so this will be the fifth root. Um, of 28 and 7 is the power alright well let's get that negative out front by the way class um, let me be clear if this had been um, what did I have right here this is 28 I had negative 28 um, power over root 7 fifths imagine that instead of 7 fifths it had been, let's say, seven sixths. Um, remembering that the six is the root, then what we have here is an even root of a negative number. So I immediately would say not possible. All right. Now many of you might not notice it until you put it in the other form, where you go, okay, that would be the um, the sixth root of negative 28 and then the seventh power but like right here is the problem you can't take the even root of a negative number that is not possible um, but this one was just fine I'm just I'm just saying for the future if in case, in case it comes up I want you to be emotionally prepared anyway 4 over 7 power over root so that means I have the seventh root of 39 and the fourth power. So that's number 12. Okay, just rewriting, rewriting. Now, this time we'll have to actually evaluate the expression without using a calculator. Okay, um, well, the cube root of 8, let me do the first part in another color. The cube root of 8 is 2. Okay, so then I've just got 2 squared which is 4. So that's the answer number 13. Alright, um, if you did not know the cube root of 8, start with this column. The cube root of 8 is 2. Alright, let's do it again. For number 14, we have the fourth root of 16. Alright, so fourth root of 16 is 2. So that means I could replace this inner part with 2. So then I have 2 to the third power. And 2 to the third power is 8. Okay, um, let's see, how about number 15? Fourth root of 81 is up first. Okay, fourth root of 81 is 3. Alright, I need to use a different chart. Um, so that's going to give me 3 in there. Um, I've got another chart. Alright, 3 to the 4th power is 81. Wait, I feel like... Hold on. Oh, that's funny. Um, yes, of course, um, it's going to be 81. Of course it's going to be... So this is a good time to maybe point out this little shortcut. Um, see how we started with 81 and we ended up with 81? Do you see anything special about this problem? Yeah, see how the power and the root are the same thing. Think about it. If I were to write this as a fraction, let's come back to here for a second. 
if I were to write this as a fraction, I've got the fourth root of 81 to the fourth power. Power over root, guys. This would be the same thing as 81 to the 4 over 4 power. Power over root. Um, but 4 over 4 is just 1. And 81 to the 1 power is just 81. So we are not at all surprised that this turned out to be 81. Basically, these 4s cancel each other out. Anyway, number 16. All right, 36 to the 3 over 2 power. It is helpful to think of this in radical form. Power root. So that means I've got the square root of 36 to the third power. All right, square root of 36 is 6. So I've got 6 to the third power, and that is, I believe, that's 216. You can check the chart, though. 6 to the third power is 216. OK, same idea here, power over root. Um, so that's going to be 4. So the, see the 2? That's the root. So I've got square root of 4 and then the fifth power. Well, the square root of 4 is 2. So that's 2 to the fifth power, which I believe is 32. But we can check the chart. 2 to the fifth power is 32. All right, number 18. Um, rewriting this in radical form. 2 is the power, 3 is the root. So I've got the cube root of 27 to the second power. That's a 7. Cube root of 27 is 3. So that's 3 squared which is 9. All right, cube root of 27. You really shouldn't need a chart for that, but cube root of 27 is 3. OK, number 19. Same thing once again. 4 is the power, 3 is the root. So cube root of 125, and then 4 is the power. OK, cube root of 125 is 5. Cube root 125 is 5. OK, so that gives us 5 on the inside here, 5 to the fourth power. And let's see, 5 to the fourth power is 625. All right, number 19. If I write this in the other form, um, one third power is the same thing as a cube root. So this is really the cube root of negative 8. All right, that negative is going to just come out because it's an odd root. So this will be negative 2 because the cube root of 8 is 2. Number 21. 3 is the power, 5 is the root. OK, 5 is the root. So that's a fifth root of negative 32. Whoops. Ah, uh, should I? I'll just do it over. Fifth root of negative 32. And then 3 is the power. So the fifth root of negative 32 is negative 2. And then that'll be to the third power. Let me double check that. Fifth root of 32. OK, fifth root 32 is 2. And yeah, for a, um, an odd root, it just simply stays negative. Now I've got negative 2 to the third power. Um, and that is going to be negative 8. All right, 2 to the third power is 8. And a negative stays around when you have an odd power. Awesome. For, for these ones, we're actually supposed to use a calculator, it says. And we're supposed to round to the nearest two decimal places. 
OK, so the cube root of 38, we actually get to use our calculator. Unbelievable. If you want to do the cube root, you have to type the number 3 first. And see where it says x root? So I'm going to hit second and then hit the caret. That turns into the cube root. So now I want the 38. So cube root of 38, there you go. OK, so that gives me 3.36. All right, number 23, the sixth root of 112. All right, for sixth root, type the six first, and there's the sixth root of 112. All right, 2.195. Well, this has to be rounded up. All right, um, if when you have to round up, and uh, you have a nine here. It's helpful, instead of thinking of it as a 9, look at the last two digits and think of it as a 19. So we have to round this up, so it'll round up from 19 to 20. OK, so it'll wind up being 2.20. OK, seventh root of negative 215. Um, Put the 7 first, hit second caret, and it becomes the seventh root. Uh, negative 215. Whoops. All right, is that what we wanted? Yes. OK, so that is negative 2.15. All right, it's just a coincidence that uh, these involve the same three digits. Okay, let's look at number 25. 241 to the one-fifth power. Um, now, I could rewrite this as the fifth root of 241, um, but I can just really type it in the way it is. I can do 241 to the one-fifth power. Okay, if I do 241, and then caret, and then fraction. So 241 to the 1 fifth power would look like this. And here we go again. I've got 2.99. Okay, now I've got both of these 9's here. So it's going to be, and I have to round up because of the 5. So I think the most helpful thing to do is you have to go all the way back to the first number that isn't a 9. And whatever you got there, look at all of these numbers that have to be rounded. So instead of thinking of this as a 9 or even a 99, think of all three of these dig digits as 299. And we have to round this up. So two, 299 is going to round to 3 hundred if you go up one. Two ninety nine becomes three hundred. Okay, and of course there's a decimal here, so that'll be three point zero zero. Alright, for number twenty six we have negative one thirty three to the one third power. All right, that is negative 5.10. All right, number 27, 69 to the 1 fourth power. All right, number 28, 96 to the 2 thirds power. Twenty point nine six will have to be rounded up to 20.97. All 
All right, 29. 356 to the 5 ninths power. Twenty-six point one five. Number thirty. Negative two thousand four hundred twenty-seven. to the four-sevenths power. All right, that's 85.97, got to round up. All right, last one, let's do a little bit of geometry. Find the radius of a sphere with volume 589 cubic centimeters. Okay, um, let's set up the formula for the volume of a sphere. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. All right, so they're giving us the volume is 589 so let's go ahead and plug that in for volume. Okay, so you know, I guess I could put it on this side, it doesn't matter. So that means um, if, uh, if this is equal to the volume, then 4 thirds pi r cubed will equal 589. I just like to put it on the right hand side. Okay, so we are supposed to find the radius and that is the variable here. So all I have to do is solve this for r. Okay, um, let's see, there's a couple different ways you can think about it. Okay, I'm going to do decimals as I go, but um, since we are in the middle of a problem, keep four decimal places until the very last step. So if I want to get uh, the radius by itself, um, then one thing I could do is divide both sides by four thirds pi. All right, 4 thirds pi on the left and divide by 4 thirds pi on the right. That way, 4 thirds and pi will cancel each other out. Okay, that is going to give me r to the third power equals whatever this is. Okay, um, but we could just type this into the calculator, 589 over 4 thirds pi. Okay, so 589 over 4 thirds pi. Soak it in. All right, now remember I said four decimal places, so that's 140.6134. Okay, always keep four decimal places until the last step. Now, if I want to get r by itself, I need to uncube this. And the way you can uncube it is by doing the cube root of both sides. All right, because the cube root of r to the third power will just be r. So it's just a matter of doing the cube root of this mess. Okay, it's really the cube root of all of this. Um, so remember, to do the cube root, you have to type in the 3 first, and then do second caret. Now I've got the cube root of 140.6134. All right, got to round up because the next number is a 9. Okay, and now we can round to two decimal places. So this is 5.20. Okay, what are the units? Centimeters, all right? The volume was in cubic centimeters, so this will be in centimeters. All right, that was the last problem. I hope it was helpful. 
I'll see you on the next video.